Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. I guess you can call it exponential even though we have a polynomial piece on the right hand side. So we have x to the power x minus 1 squared equals 2x plus 1. I'll be presenting two methods even though the first method is kind of cheap. You could call it cheap I guess but it still works. And obviously second method is my favorite. Almost all the time. So let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to use substitution. As you know, substitution is a very powerful method, and we use that a lot. So I'm going to call x minus 1 y. Let's set it equal to any other variable. And then from here, we get x equals y plus 1. So that's the thing we're going to use. And of course, this also implies that 2x plus 1 can be written as 2 times y plus 1 plus 1. And that is going to be 2y plus 3. So we're going to replace 2x plus 1 with 2y plus 3. We're going to replace x with y plus 1, and so on and so forth. So let's start here. Replace x with y plus 1. That's our base. Now that simplifies the exponent a great deal because now we're replacing x minus 1 with y. So that gives us y squared in the exponent. And the right-hand side is 2x plus 1, which can be replaced with 2y plus 3. Great. Now, here's why I call this method cheap, because it's not analytical solution. It's uh, not graphical. We're just making a guess and then verifying that it's correct. I'm guessing check is fine, but it's in, it's in an interesting way. So I noticed that if y squared is an integer, just making an assumption, then y plus 1 is being raised to a power. And I'm hoping that it's the second power because if you raise y plus 1 to the second power, then you get y squared plus 2y plus 1. So I'm getting the 2y twice, which is nice. But at the same time, I'm saying that, hey, what happens if you replace y squared with 2? And that actually implies if you uh, replace y squared with 2, then you actually get 2y plus 3, which is what we have here. Make sense? So in other words, I'm saying that if y squared equals 2, then we have a solution. Why? Because it works. Okay, it's that simple. So what does that mean? y squared equals 2. It has two meanings. First, y is equal to square root of 2. That's one of the solutions. And remember, there are two solutions, or there are two numbers, whose square equals 2. And those numbers are square root of 2 and the opposite of square root of 2, or the negative of square root of 2. Obviously, these are the y values, and we do want to find the x values. So how do you find them? x is equal to y plus 1. So let's go ahead and find the x values from here by adding 1 to both sides. x equals y plus 1, which is 1 plus root 2. I like to add from the left because the second y value is negative. And x equals y plus 1 again. And this time it is going to be 1 minus root 2. So I got two x values, and they should both be fine. But of course, we're going to check our work. And then I'll present the second method, which is my favorite for sure. And at the end, I'm going to show you a graph of two things. Awesome. Let's continue. So here's the checking part. And I want to use the x values for checking. x to the power x minus 1 squared equals 2x plus 1. Now replace x with 1 plus root 2 first. 1 plus root 2 to the power 1 plus root 2 minus 1, which is root 2 squared. And now this equals 1 plus root 2 to the power 2. And if you expand it, you're going to get 3 plus 2 root 2. Now if you do it with 2x plus 1, replace x with... 1 plus root 2, you get, and of course don't forget to add the 1 like I did, plus 1, you get 2 plus 1, which is 3, plus 2 root 2, which is the same as this one. Awesome. So root 2 works. Let's go ahead and test negative root 2. I mean, not root 2. 1 plus root 2 works. And now let's go ahead and check 1 minus root 2. Okay, if you replace x with 1 minus root 2, what happens? And again, we're going to use the original equation because it's more fun. So replace x with 1 minus root 2 to the power 1 minus root 2 minus 1, which is negative root 2 squared. And this is 1 minus root 2 
to the second power. Remember, we said that there are two numbers whose square equals 2, and those numbers are root 2 and negative root 2, and this is one of them. And this is going to give you 3 minus 2 root 2. So that's what we got from the left-hand side. And if you check the right-hand side by replacing x with 1 minus root 2, you're going to get 2 plus 1, which is 3, minus 2 root 2. And these two values are the same. So check, check. x equals 1 minus root 2 also works. Which means we have two solutions, 1 plus root 2 and 1 minus root 2 as our solution set. They both seem to work, but on the graph you're going to notice something interesting because you're not going to see both solutions. And you already, you may already know why. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. I think second method is really cool because first when I looked at this problem, okay, you can solve it, but then there must be any different way to do it. Because here's what inspired me to try the second method. I do see x squared, x minus 1 squared, which has x squared minus 2x plus 1. And on the right hand side, I have 2x plus 1. Even though they're not the same, uh, they can be turned into the same thing by a little bit of manipulation. That's what we're going to do now. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, let's see. First of all, let's go ahead and expand this. What is that? It is x to the power x squared minus 2x plus 1. And obviously, I can write this as x squared minus 2x minus 1. But notice that this 2x minus 1 does not match with the 2x plus 1. So I want to change it a little bit, and we can do that. Let's just manipulate it a little bit. So it fits. How? I can write this as x squared minus 2x minus 1, so that when I take out the negative, I get 2x plus 1 inside the parentheses. You know what I'm talking about? This part. And then, of course, I have to adjust it because these two are not equal as is. So I have to add a 2 to balance out the negative 1. Make sense? Okay, now, that's the motivation. Hopefully that makes sense. And uh, here, if it doesn't, you can always ask in the comment section. And now we can write it as x squared minus 2x plus 1. And yay, that's what I wanted to get, plus 2. And remember, the left-hand side is x squared, x to the power x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, I'm happy because I got 2x plus 1 on the left-hand side, sort of, like here. This is cool. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to split this into uh, a product and a quotient. Why? Because the minus sign in the exponent indicates division, and plus sign means addition. In other words, this is what I'm trying to say. If you have something like a to the power x minus y plus z, obviously you can write this as a to the power x divided by a to the power y times a to the power z. It doesn't matter where you write the a to the z, it's just going to be multiplied either by the fraction or the top, same thing. Make sense? So this allows us to kind of split it up that way. Maybe I, I'll write it this way, it looks a little nicer that way, okay, like this. Make sense? Okay, so that's what we're going to do here, let's do it. And then we're going to set it equal to 2x plus 1, and we'll do a little bit of hocus pocus, math and magic, I mean some manipulations, and then we'll get the answer. Okay, without further ado, we can write this as x to the power x squared divided by x to the power 2x plus 1 times x to the second power, and that equals 2x plus 1. Now here's the most magical part. We're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by this, and we're going to end up with something super duper nice. I love it. x to the power x squared multiplied by x squared equals x to the power 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. At this point, allow me to say, do you see what I see? Hopefully you do. Okay, hopefully you can follow along, and notice that I have x squared here that corresponds to 2x plus 1, and I have x squared here, which is the same as 2x plus 1. You know what that implies? It implies x squared equals 2x plus 1. Yay! Because if that's the case, then our equation works. And since both of these functions are increasing, there's only one solution. Uh, because if the y values are the same, then the x values have to be the same too. Always increasing, meaning bijection. Anyway, so from here I can just subtract 2x and then add 1 to both sides and write this as a perfect square, and everything is perfect. Everything is awesome. So I can write root 2 and negative root 2, and guess what? We're going to get the exact same solutions. Okay? 
Those are going to be the x values. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now. Ooh, that wasn't too far. So I got 1 plus root 2 and 1 minus root 2. I can write it as plus minus. And the graph only shows the positive solution because when the base is negative, it's not good for the exponential function. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.